this song, we sang it last week. Did you, who remembered that we sang it last week also? Ah, there's a few that's awake. And, yeah. We sang it last week, and it was just burning in my heart. This morning early, not earlier, but this morning I phoned Mark. I said, listen, Mark, I want us to sing this song again. It's so meaningful. Listen, meaningful these words. And I'm going to share with you about this, to surrender. The only way to know him more is to surrender. That's the key this morning. Thank you, Father, for your word. And thank you, you're going to speak to us. And we're going to listen, not listen only, but we want to obey. Holy Spirit, help us to receive. To receive from the Father. Come, Holy Spirit, reveal the Father to us. We want to know Him more. That's our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew. I'm going to read again only two verses just to continue with what I've shared two weeks ago. Matthew 10. Matthew 10, just keep your finger there. I want also to welcome those who are listening and, and uh, looking at us this morning. I trust the Lord that He will really reveal His heart to, to you also. That you will sense His presence. It was amazing this worship this morning here. And I trust that the Lord really will minister to you there where you are at this stage. Matthew 10 verse 1. Before we read, remember when I spoke to you two weeks ago, I said that there's no doubt in my heart that God is a sovereign God. Amen? Amen. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's no one like Him. Amen? Amen. I truly believe that. But number two, we've re read that God gave some of His authority, His rulership, He gave to the human beings. For those who are born again. Amen? Amen? I'm hoping I'm talking to you. He gave some, listen, not all, some of his authority he gave to us. As children of God to rule and to reign with him. Amen. Amen. Let's read that. Matthew 10 verse 1. This when Jesus called his disciples and then he called his 12 disciples to him and gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. What did he give them? Power, authority. He gave us, and I'm not going to go back to that. He gave it to the disciples, but we disciples of the disciples. So he gave us authority to rule and to reign over unclean spirits. To heal the sick, uh, those who are sick. Amen. Let's read verse 8. I'm at Matthew 10 verse 8. He's not asking them. He's telling them. Do you see that? Heal the sick. Cleanse the leopard. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. My brother and sister, I want you to know God's sovereign. But he gave some of his authority to us, his children, to rule and to reign with him here on earth. Amen. And I'm not going to go back. In, in, in Psalm 8, I've read a verse, Psalm 115, there were two verses, I think 6 and 7, and in Hebrews 2, also in verse 6 and 7. We're not going to read that again. Right. But what I want to share with you this morning is, why did God give us authority? There's a purpose. And what's that purpose? You see, sometimes, yeah, let me go there. 
because we will find politicians, not else, you will find politicians, they've got authority or rulership, but they don't, don't do anything with us. And I think you recognize of whom I'm talking about. He's got the leadership. He's got the power and authority to say, this is wrong. This is right. We'll do this. But he's not saying anything. The question God's asking me and you, he gave us authority to rule and to reign with him. What are we doing with it? I want to show you a tool. I hope the ladies know what's this. I want to show you a tool. This is a? A what? Drill. Right. And you can sh see the, here. I'm using this a lot. I'm not throwing this around. It seems to you perhaps I'm misusing it, but I'm using it a lot. And the way to use this is not just to press. Nothing will happen. What do I need to do? I need to plug it in at the power source. In itself, there's no power. But when it's plugged in, guess what? You can work powerfully with this. What God's saying to us, he gave us authority. But the only way authority will flow through our lives, we need to be plugged in at the power source. Pastor Chris, have you got the scripture for this? Yes. John 15. Let's go to John 15. Well known scripture. You will know this. John 15, we're going to read verse 5. John 15, verse 5. It's all about the vine and the branches. Verse 5. We're not going to read the whole thing. Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit. Listen carefully. For without me, you can think nothing. You can do. Not think and know. Because I'm the vine, you the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. Not see, not hear. You can do. It's an action. My brother and sister, God gave us authority. And the purpose of that is that we will do something with it. And the only way to flow, to do, to bring his kingdom down is to be plucked in. Stay in the branch. If you stay in the branch, guess what? There will be... Many fruit, much fruit. Amen? Amen? We will do a lot. Verse 8. Verse, let me see. Let's read verse 8. Oh. By this my Father is glorified, that you will bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples this fruit is talking about actions remember so that you will be a disciple what's a disciple a disciple of christ is somebody who's doing what christ did amen that's a disciple that means my brother and sister the only way for me, for you to be disciples of Christ, we need to be, be plucked in. Because it's His power that will flow through us through the Holy Spirit. That's the purpose why you've, God gave me and you authority. To rule and to reign with Him, but we need to be plucked in. The second thing I want to mention 
If you don't know something, you won't desire it. Amen? Is it true? I'm going to give you an example. Who of you know what's this? If you know what's this, put up your hand. My wife knows what's this. Yeah, there's some guys that knows what's this. Why do they know this? Because they've tasted it. If you don't know this, you won't desire it. Is it true? There's a lot of you who don't desire this. But guess what? There's a few of us that desire this. Why? Because we know it. Amen. It's not alcohol, my brother and sister. It's, it's tonic. It, it's, it's juice that you use with soda water. If you don't know, there's a bit here, but speak to Adi Mula. <laughs> I've, I, at the braai, I used it, and he asked me, what's this? I said, oh, it's nice. Kimut <laughs> kibunate. Something like that. I said, this is delicious. And he asked, Pastor, can I taste? And I gave him, and guess what? He's hooked on. <laughs> the story is, if you don't know something, there will be no desire in your heart for that. That's why if I say soda and, uh, soda and tonic, some of you think, what's that? Others will say, wow, I want some of it. Um, you understand? Yeah. Right. What, is, what was the purpose of all the signs and wonders in the Bible? The purpose, God put it in the Bible, that He wants us to have the desire that what is here will be here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. This history... It's not supposed to stay history. It's supposed to be part of my life. And then you only get through knowing what's here. We read this. We read about Smith Wigglesworth. And guess what? This was a desire in my heart. Lord, if you use Peter, difficult guy, if you use Paul, a murderer of your people. If you use them, Father, I've got the desire that this theory, this story, these stories will become my life. That's why we're reading the stories. It's not just to have knowledge. Amen. It's not about knowledge. God wants us to desire what's here so that we will become the story. Amen. Amen. And the only way to do that is to know. By knowing, the story becomes part of my life. Amen. The desire in my heart, Lord, what I've read here, I'm desiring it. Amen. My brother and sister, and that's why God gave us authority. And we see and we read that God used people powerfully. And that desire must be, become part of our lives. The problem is we're afraid. I'm just telling you my story. We're afraid to go out to be light and salt. I want to read you a piece of paper that my wife gave me. Years ago, it's in Afrikaans, but I translate this. It reads as follow: He who doesn't, no, he who doesn't go to war will never taste victory. Listen, he who doesn't go to war will never taste victory. We want victories, but we don't want to go to war. It's impossible. We want 
these stories to be part of our lives, but we don't want to go out. Impossible. Is it true? Yes. We can only taste victory if we go out. You see, we are afraid. We want the victories. We want the signs of wonders to happen through our lives, but we don't want to lay our hands on people. We don't want to pray for people. We don't want to cast our demons. Amen? Then it's impossible. If, if we want to taste victory, guess what? We need to go out. Mark 16. Mark 16, well-known scripture. I'm, I'm reading these verses over and over and over. And I'm reading this because these stories must become our lives. Mark 16, verse... Let's read verse 15. And he said to them, Go... That word I've said to you is not leave your job and go to, uh, to Africa. That word means as you go. As you go. As I'm going to work. As I'm going to, to the gym. As I'm going to whatever. As you go. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every uh, cre uh, creation. I'm skipping. Let's go down. Okay. Then it says there, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believed. That's us. In my name will they cast out demons. They will, sp uh, they will speak with new tongues. Uh, they will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly. Um, it will by no means harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will be, um, they will be, uh, they will recover. Then uh, verse 20. And they went and they, listen, here's the key. God promised them these things. And then verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord, uh, and the Lord worked with them. And confirming the word through accomplishing signs. Amen. What was the key? And they went out. They did not pray and wait and wait. Beg God to do something. God commanded them. And they went out. And God worked with them. Amen. Amen. My brother and sister, is it challenging? Yes. But it's the only way for us to taste victory. Remember what's our calling? To destroy the works of the devil. His plan is to kill, steal, and to destroy. God sent us to give people life and life in abundance. And if I don't go out, guess what? God can't work with me, can't use me. But God's willing and wanting to use me. That's why he gave us authority. Amen? That's why. He gave us not authority to brag with that. He gave us authority so that when we go out, he will work powerfully through our lives. Amen. That's a purpose. Pastor Chris, are you afraid? Yes. The winds are blowing strong against us. But we build 
to be more than conquerors. Amen? Amen. God trusts us with His Word. Let me end with uh, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. No, let's go to Luke 12. Let's end with Luke 12. My brother and sister, I'm motivating you this morning. We can all say, hallelujah, we've got authority. But the purpose of the authority is to work with Him. Stay connected to the source. But God wants to use us powerfully. To what? To destroy the works of the enemy. Luke 12, verse 31 and 32. Luke 12. Proverbs 31 and 32. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things sh uh, shall be added to you. Verse 32. That's the one I want to read. Do not fear, Agape Church. Do not fear, little flock. For it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do not fear. It's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Rulership with Him. And He promised, listen, God's not a liar. God promised if we go out... He will work with us and through us. And that's my prayer for each one of us. There will be resistance. Sometimes it will be a fight with that piece of paper. Sometimes it will be tough. But the only way to taste victory is to go through it. Amen. Amen. God's promise, He will never leave us, never forsake us. And He wants us to be more than conquerors every time. Sometimes we will fail, but God is really with us and say, go, go for it. The title of this service is, Go For It. In other words, obedience. Amen? Right. Let's just close our eyes. I just feel my heart, God's challenging this morning in a certain area. God's challenging you this morning. Perhaps He's telling you, you need to walk on water. Give the first step. God put desires in your heart. And those desires is to, to help you that those things will be part of your life, my brother and sister. Desire is not there only to read, but he wants us to go and do. What's God, God challenging you with? Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the amazing stories, history, how you empowered sinners, robbers, murderers with the Holy Spirit, and you used them for your glory, for your kingdom. Beautiful stories, Father. But Father, we want to, we've got the desire in our hearts that we won't be only stories, Father, but we will live out these stories. That you want to use us to build your kingdom. And thank you, Father, that you gave us authority, dominion to rule and to reign with you over all the powers of the enemy. And we want to trust, uh, ask you, Father, that you will help us. You already equipped us. 
that you will help us, that we will stay connected with you, that your flow, your power will flow through our lives as never before. So that your kingdom will come in our lives, but also through our lives. Father, I pray this for each one of us. Use us. Use us for your name's sake. That's our prayer this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.